but I think I was 11 when he first went on the air. It was just this odd black and white show with puppets with mouths that didn't move. I didn't get it. And this guy's Welsh, so he definitely yeah. didn't watch We it. didn't have a television. Mr. Rogers, I'm here to interview you. It is so nice to meet you. You okay? I'm profiling Mr. Rogers. I knew the writers, Noah and Micah, and I remember actually that they told me about this script, and I said, what, why am I not directing that? And uh, they were like, oh, sorry. So it was something I, that I was aware of that existed, and it just sounded interesting to me. And Peter Seraf, who's one of our wonderful producers, sent me the script on the day I was sort of emerging from my fog of making Can You Ever Forgive Me? And I read it and wept and thought, I have to make this movie. Sometimes we have to ask for help, and that's okay. You begin by, first of all, searching your brain for all the images that you had prior to it. Every bit of research you go either confirms or denies that initial impression. I think I watched seven hours of it before I realized, oh, this is not for me. I, I, you cannot be an adult and watch it at, at attempting to be entertained. It's for someone who doesn't know how the world works. And as soon as I got that, I started watching it in a completely different manner. But there are the do great documentary, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, and tons and tons of uh, provided video of interviews and other things that, that, uh, that he had done. But the, it's the show itself, particularly when he walks out of the house and the camera move, pans up and moves into the music store or the theater or the movie studio, that's where you end up seeing uh, him operating in the, in the real world. And I think I got more from the, that footage than from anything else. But then you got to talk to the boss here, uh, uh, our director, and say, okay, what are we going for here? Uh, the, the script speaks volumes without a doubt, but how far do we go? How imitative do we go? How interpretive do we go? Is there moments of uh, bona fide improvisation? And where are we gonna throw deep? And uh, every day ends up being some brand of a challenge that you have to push through this civ of some combination of creativity and, uh, and background. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? You sang every song live, though. We pre-recorded the songs almost as a rehearsal and a, as a backup. And I also really loved the idea because Fred really did sing live on the show mm -hmm. of you actually coming in and doing everything and singing live that it would have a different quality if you sang live. And so you really did puppeteer and sing live and all of that. It's because really a musical. It's a musical about... <laughs> yes. Well, it's a vulnerable thing to do to sing, especially live like that and with the whole crew there. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. You had a story that you said at the Q&A yesterday about how when you and Rita are fighting, now you sing to her in Mr. Rogers' voice. Well, let's not call it fighting. <laughs> <laughs> do I want that to be in variety? <laughs> when are we discussing important themes <laughs> uh, uh, or, you know, plans for the future. We, when it's all done, one of us tries to beat each other to the punch. Well, well you know what, that was great, you know, because it's, it's good to talk. <laughs> it's good to say the things we feel. It's good to talk. You know, we must do more than balk. It's good to talk. And <laughs> lo and behold, it's actually true. This piece will be for an issue about heroes. Do you consider yourself a hero? My f first foray into journalism was, was talking with Tom Juno. I was interested in what his journalistic technique was, um, and, and he talked me through how he would approach it. His tactic was to wait. Um, but he said in meeting Fred, he, he met his match. When I first watched Fred Rogers for the first time, I remember thinking something, th something was wrong. In, there was all these enormous pauses, and I went, well, something's gone wrong in the show. They, he missed a cue or someone hasn't come in. And then you, re, you realize that it, it's, it's a very important uh, and very placed step that Fred does in allowing children not only to listen, but then to have the time to process. The placement of time and pause, um, I think, between Tom and myself uh, was, well, it was, it was interesting to me. But I think we all do this thing, right, where, where, where you might ask someone a question and if they take too long to answer, you probably fill it in, right? Fred did this, he would ask a question and just wait. And I've started doing that with my kid as well. Cause I'll notice with a child, you might say, what do you feel like having for lunch today? 
and they'll think and you'll say peanut butter and jelly you know and you start answering for them but if you just wait they will eventually tell you exactly what they're feeling but we're impatient and it's so hard to do that and and that was the fun of these scenes between the two of them they were odd and i would push them i would say longer wait longer <laughs> this has to sit until you are uncomfortable with how long you have been sitting looking at each other in this moment mm -hmm. because apparently Fred did that not just on the show but in at a dinner party yeah I did not have the skill that Fred has which is to meet somebody and ha make it seem as though they're the most important person in the world everybody that we met that worked with Fred at QED because we had the lighting guy and uh, we had sure a number of people who said when you talk to Fred you felt as though you were the most important person in the world and I would say if I got anything from Fred, I think I'm a pretty happy person when I wake up in the morning. But playing Fred made me a better listener. I'm listening to all this and I'm saying, thinking Jer Jerry Vogel must have been the mirror opposite of <laughs> all of this. You know, it's like pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You know, life is tough. Nobody's going to give you anything and uh, live with it. I think Jerry could have used many, many could have watched many, many episodes of Fred Rogers to learn something. I think the best thing we can do is to let people know boom, that each one of them is precious. He really didn't shy away from talking about the hardest things that were happening. I mean, he did an episode about assassination after Bobby Kennedy was shot. He did a whole week on divorce. He was not somebody who shied away from difficult, painful topics, and he believed in telling kids the truth. So I'm sure he would be staying up late at night as he did, racking his brain and his heart, trying to figure out the best way to explain what's happening in our world to kids and to try to give them ways to cope with it and to cope with their fear. Well, I, th I think he would assure that very specific audience of two and a half to four and a half, five-year-old kids that scary things happen and they make you afraid and all of us experience being afraid it's good to share that feeling it's good to say you know i'm afraid just as it's good to share i i'm happy we are all in this together and don't think just because you're young that there <clears throat> that you shouldn't have these feelings whenever i'm asked to give advice to young filmmakers it's that you just have to do it at this point we have so many tools available to us. You can make movies on your phone, and that's such a positive thing. But you have to practice your craft, and you can't wait for somebody to tell you you can do it. I think you just have to practice and work toward it. Nobody's going to hand it to you. And at some point, you have to figure out what you want to say in the world and start making things. I know that I'm also standing here, sitting here, because of all of the women who came before me who pushed the doors open for me so that I can be making movies today. And we have to just keep pushing because it's hard fought for me to even be here. Mm -hmm.